So, Casey, can you see me? I can. Nice to get to that. All right. Yeah, you know, got to get in the mood. So, Rock Titan fans, uh, we are here with Casey McQuillan. Casey, how are you doing tonight? I am doing really well. Excited to talk to you guys. Yeah, yeah. No, it is the season to be merry. And I appreciate your time because I know how busy you are. Um, you know, everything that you've had uh, going on with the You Matter tour. How's that going so far? That's going really well. I mean, I've been doing a uh, You Matter tour for a very long time. Yeah, so, yeah. So it's definitely picked up. Um, okay. Kind of become more... Uh, a bigger part, I guess, of my career as I go on and on, but um, yeah, it's really great. I love it's. A, I love having that be the way I make a lot of my fans because I feel like it's rare that somebody in my genre of my age right meets most of their fans in person. Okay, you know, most people that are like you know pop, young female singer songwriter pop. Mm -hmm. you to make their stuff via YouTube, which I did, and stuff like American Idol, which I did, but it's really Well, I want, I want to touch on that. I actually want to touch on that. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, because uh, you are the very first person that, you know, Rock Titan, or myself, has spoken to that's actually been on American Idol. Um, oh. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you, that, that's so wild. That's so cool that you actually made it as far as you did. What was that experience like? I mean, what was it like for you as an artist standing up in front of people like Harry Connick Jr. and Jennifer Lopez? Like, I mean, because these are like, you know, major celebrities, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, I I went to Berkeley College of Music. Right. Uh, and I was at Berkeley at the time that I was doing that. I was a full-time wedding singer, actually, as well. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. And so it's performance experience. So I already had a lot of experience um, performing in front of people, but nothing can prepare you for that level of pressure. Right. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, you're like on the spot. You know, it's you can't have a bad day at that moment. It's not like hold on one um, second. I'll be right back. I know, and I was so nervous. My main worry was that I was going to forget my starting pitch, and I was going to start on the wrong note because I you, I wasn't you, you know you sing a cappella. Right. Right. Um, and so I remember they didn't air this on TV. If you look at the clip they aired, they kind of start halfway through my audition. Yeah. And I got it's because I sound like a complete idiot. Yeah. Before I started singing because I didn't know that the judges were going to talk to me. And Keith Urban started asking me about who my favorite artist was. And I, I panicked. And I, I, every name of every artist in the whole world flew out of my brain. And I just must have looked like a complete idiot because I was just like playing the, um, the note C in my head over and over and over trying not to forget it. Well, I'll tell you but, what, I'll tell you what, whoever did the editing for that show, they did a great job because, you know, you looked and sounded amazing and I mean, there were no gaps or anything like that. So that was pretty cool. But, um, so, so, you know, again, would you say, well, you know what, that's, I don't want to ask you that question. Go ahead. From, I, will, I will answer it if it's Yeah, fair. no. From, from the time you were on American Idol to now, what's that experience been like for you? That's a really good question. Um, well, I mean, how much would you say you've grown? Because clearly, I mean, that experience had to have had a major effect on you. You know, so this is actually part of the thing that I talk about in my anti-bullying program because it's really a self-confidence program. Right. I, I want to talk about that, too. A lot of the kids get really excited, right? Because I was on American Idol and we play it up, but I sing that song Skyscraper that I right. was American Idol and we get everybody all stoked about how exciting it is. And I talk to them about how being on American Idol was some of the hardest months of my life and how um, I'm not very good at, you know, uh, asking people to vote for me and yeah. asking people to tune in and that's not my natural predisposition and it was very odd for me to be so aggressively the center of attention in my town and yeah. all that kind of stuff and um what I really learned was how to fail and I know that that sounds counterintuitive but I didn't win American Idol and I know right. that might sound funny to you but like of course not yeah. but well, I know but I mean just just the and fact that you got that failure yeah. all the time. right Right. Of course, nobody else does. And what I what I say to the students at schools is that I went on national television and I failed in front of millions of people, and I'm the only person in the world who saw that as failure. Yeah. And what taught me is I can go and I can have an interview with you, and I can I'm moving to New York in like a month, and I'm living the life that I want because 
pretty much people are really excited when it's going well for you and they kind of don't notice when it's not. And so the only thing I'm gambling is my pride. That's what American Idol taught me. Right. So nothing, it's not going to be that bad. You're going to do well and people are going to be really excited and then you're going to get cut from the show and nobody's going to care. Right. And that was really, oh, it opened me up to taking a lot of risks. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one of the things I love about your music and one of the things that really got my attention is your message. You seem to really have a strong message in your music and at least for you specifically, and this is something near and dear to my heart, you really do have this very strong anti-bullying message. Yeah. So what's that all about? I mean, can you kind of touch on, I mean, not that it's necessarily a philanthropy of yours, although I guess to some extent it definitely is since that's something that you address in, in your music, but what, what's that whole anti-bullying thing about for you? You know, not all the songs that I write are about bullying. No, sure, sure, all, sure. All of the songs have the same core concept, right? Which is self-expression, right? You won't find a lot of my songs that are like giant metaphors that are about like being a shooting firework in the sky, right. and like I love those songs and I dance to those songs and they're fun for me to listen to as a listener. Yeah, but. The what I really tend to write because I, I, I'm always trying to be honest and whether that's honesty about being happy or about being sad or about being vulnerable about being bullied whatever it is it's all about understanding that my experience and what I went through other people did too that's what I get out of it I love writing songs about what I went through about what, what people in my life went through right because then I get to feel that connection and so I really openly talk about my experiences growing up and some experiences of people close to me um, and how that's reflected in my music. Right. Because that was part of my journey. Right. You know, I, it's funny, but you can track my adolescence in my songs, which is weird. That's but awesome. No, that's very cool. Page, a page of my diary once every three weeks that you can, I can go back to and go, oh yeah, that's what it felt like to be at, right after the first dance I went to in high school and that's what it felt like you know after I didn't get invited to that party in college and that's what it, you know what I mean like, oh come I, on you were a party girl you know it <laughs> you were at all the parties Casey's a bad girl we know it come on now I do drink a lot of wine probably uh, a little bit more you, than my we gotta take care of your vocal cords that's no good no, yeah, we're... You're supposed to say, I don't drink. I'm not about any of that. I have to take care of my voice. I'm an artist, you know? Um, you know, I found that everything in moderation. Oh, I love it. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. All right. So, you know, and, and you were just, all right. So you're talking about some of the diversity of your songs and how you channel a lot of your life experiences and whatnot in your work. And I mean, I, I guess that's just kind of... Uh, you know, status quo for artists like yourself because you write your own songs, yes? I mean, have you ever had anyone else write any of your songs or have you always done all the work? Um, no, I've, I've never sung anything written by anyone else. Okay, all right. My songs I've written with other people. I was a songwriting major at Berkeley. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's major kudos. Yeah, it was really great and I met like just the most talented people in the whole world. So yeah. um, I've never written with others, but no, I've never released any music that... I didn't write myself. All right. All right. Well, that's very cool. So one of the things we want to talk about here, because we're going to be showing the Rock Titan audience at the conclusion of this interview, come back to me. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So what uh, what was going through your heart and soul when you wrote this song and when you were making this video? Is, it, is this your boyfriend that's oh, in this God, video? Oh, God, I wish. Look at him. <laughs> yeah. Um, look at him. Yeah. He's making me jealous. I mean, come on. You know, seriously. A really talented uh, model actor. Yeah. A friend of mine out in New York. Um, the video was super fun to shoot. Yeah. Um, Aaron Dean Productions, this great director that I worked with. We really had a DIY budget. I told Aaron that I wanted to have a major label video on yeah. an indie label budget. Right, right, right. Easy to I think we did a pretty good job. Um, you know, all those apartments that I shot in were Airbnbs. You know, I spent all this time. Yeah, like that. Like, look how gorgeous that yeah. apartment is. I wish that was my apartment. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm I'm always I'm such a goody two shoes. And I was on Skype 
I was on a Airbnb telling everybody like, Hey, I want to use your apartment for commercial purposes. And it was like, no, 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 no. Well, see, once you're on American Idol, you know, you've got people wanting to give you all kinds of favors, you know, because Casey McClellan's on the way up, you know? I have dropped the American Idol thing a couple of times trying to get an apartment. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's too funny. That's great. And so, yeah, I wrote that song though, actually a while ago. Um, I wrote that song, I think, my sophomore year in college. No and kidding. So, wow. There was about a three-year difference between when I wrote it and when we released it. I've been working on this EP that's coming out right now Okay. for three years. Wow. Uh, with, so let's talk partner. about the EP. Let's talk about the EP. What do you got going on there? Now, is that with Beautiful that you have? Yeah. Oh, okay. Beautiful. Come Back to Me is like the big radio single okay. from that. Um, okay. We called it Beautiful because that is... One of the songs that I sing during the Matter Tour in schools, okay. and it's, I think it really envelops me as an artist right. in terms of that honesty. Um, but come back to me is you know about boys and breakups and all the other stuff that I write about. Yeah, not um, not not about coming back to me. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I worked on this. EP for three years with my producer, Charles Humanry, who's okay. unbelievable. We met at Berkeley. Okay. Um, and my engineer, Ben Barnett, and I spent a ridiculous amount of time in a yeah. profit studio in Boston called The Record Company. I want to give them shout outs because they're amazing and very affordable. All right. Well, and talking about them. shout outs, I want to give a shout out to Hypermedia right now and Patrice because yeah. I know they coordinated this. So thank you. The best. Thanks, Patrice and Beatrice. Yeah. So that's. that's 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 good stuff. But the, so I mean, so through your Berkeley experience, I guess, and American Idol and all these other things you've done, have you found that your network's really kind of built and kind of taking you to that next level where you are right now? Um, you know, I think that was really exciting about the Berkeley crowd and the Idol crowd. That's pretty that. elite. I mean, that's elite company over there. Seriously. I, you know, what's really cool is that I'm watching some of my friends blow up. Like I was just on my, the Grammy nominations came out yesterday and a couple of my friends on Facebook were right. involved with things that were nominated and, you know, I've got friends touring and it's very exciting. And so it has this atmosphere that you want to work with everybody and you want to be involved and everybody's on the way up. And it's really an awesome environment to be in, which is half the reason I'm moving to New York is that, um, that seems to be where everybody is. Really? You're moving yeah. to New York. Yeah, man. So, so aren't, aren't you a New England girl? I am, and my mom is so sad. That oh. I'm sad, but I have to go. That's where the music is. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, 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 uh, so you're going to New York. You've, you've been promoting your tour for quite a while. You've got these songs coming out on your new EP. What's next? What's going on? Oh, gosh. What's next? Well, we're just trying to... Uh, set up a lot more shows. I'm going to be introducing the New Matter Tour into the New York area, which is really exciting. Okay. Um, and this EP will be coming out in early 2017 in full, so everybody should keep an eye out for that. All right. All right. So, uh, well, I, I want to be sensitive to your time because I know you're, uh, you know, getting ready to live the lifestyles of the rich and famous and everything I'm here. How about that? I got to go to the gym more like it. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. No, well, you know, you, you look like uh, you are a bit of a gym rat there. Thank you. It's the, can you see the muscles through the screen? Well, see, it's it's the black shirt that you have on. See, why didn't you wear a tank top? See, this is my Berkeley hipsterness. Oh, I, I see. In like pink and red and blue, and now I find my whole closet is black. There you go. There you go. Well, I mean, you know, look at me. I mean, uh, then again, I'm an old man, so no one cares to look at me anyway. But uh. Yeah, yeah. So it's funny. I just had my assistant hand me a charger here because obviously we want to show your audience the music video and me and all my ultimate wisdom. I came down into my uh, office here for this interview and I didn't bring the charger. And you know what's funny? She brought me a freaking phone charger, not my laptop charger. Oh my God. All right. Well, we're going to, uh, we are going to move on to your video here. I need, I, yeah, yeah. Come on, assistant, assistant. A.K.A. <laughs> wife. Yeah. So uh, anyway, well, Casey, thank you so much for your time. It has been an absolute blast. And, uh, you know, for the Rock Titan audience, we are going to be paying very close attention to you. And I just, 
congratulations on all the success that you've been having. And, you know, I wish you much, much more. And uh, happy holidays. Thank you so much, And, uh, yeah, so, Casey, we're out of here. And, uh, you know, everybody, check out this video by the rising star, Casey McQuillan.